Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. Today we're tackling Robin Hood. Robin Hood, huh? Interesting choice. Yeah, they're everywhere these days, right? So we thought we'd take a deep dive into their world, see what makes them tick. And more importantly, if this whole democratizing finance thing is actually, you know, doable. Exactly. So we've got the 10K reports from 2021, 2022, and 2023 all lined up, ready to be dissected. The good stuff. Oh yeah, the juicy details hidden in plain sight. Now, one thing that jumped out at me right away was their mission statement, expanding access to our financial system. Big words. It's a catchy tagline for sure. Right. And they're big on this whole first principles thinking, inclusion, equity, and belonging. Yeah. That's very on trend. Almost like it's straight out of Silicon Valley. Exactly. Yeah. So is this just corporate jargon or is there something more to it? Uh, that's the million dollar question. And to answer that, we got to remember one thing. Robin Hood isn't your grandpa's brokerage firm. They're not targeting Wall Street veterans. They're going after a whole new generation of investors. The ones who are used to doing everything on their phones. Exactly. The ones who might feel intimidated by traditional finance, who want something simpler, more accessible. Robinhood's whole strategy hinges on attracting those users. So it's not just about being woke. It's a calculated business move. You got it. They're carving out a niche. But that brings us to the big question. How do they actually make money? They're not bombarding us with ads like every other app out there. Yeah, where's the catch? Well, their revenue model is where things get really interesting, and it's all about understanding this thing called payment for order flow. Payment for dot what now? I know, it's a mouthful. We'll break it down after this quick break. All right, back to payment for order flow. It sounds kind of shady, like some kind of backroom deal. Yeah, it's definitely gotten some bad press lately, but at its core, it's actually pretty straightforward. Okay, so demystify it for us. What exactly is going on here? So imagine you want to buy some stock on Robinhood. You hit that buy button thinking your order goes straight to the stock exchange, right? Makes sense. That's what I'd assume. Not quite. Instead, Robinhood routes your order to a third-party market maker. Uh -huh. These are usually big financial firms. Think Citadel Securities, Virtue Financial, that kind of crowd. Wait, so someone else is handling my trade? In a nutshell, yeah. And here's the kicker. These market makers, they pay Robinhood for the privilege of executing your order. They're paying for the right to. Uh, what? Make money off my trade. Well, kinda. See, they make money on the tiny difference between the buying and selling price of a stock, what's called the spread, and by getting a huge volume of orders from Robinhood, they can profit from those small spreads at a massive scale. That's like Robinhood is the middleman, getting a cut of the action just for directing the traffic. Exactly. And that, my friend, is payment for order flow. It's how Robinhood can offer zero commission trading. They're making money on the back end through these order flow deals. Huh. Sneaky, but kind of smart. Yep. But it does raise some eyebrows, right? Like, are we getting the best possible price if our orders are being routed through these third parties? That's the million dollar question. And it's why PFOF has been under so much scrutiny from regulators. So Robinhood's whole business model kind of hinges on a controversial practice. Pretty much. And it makes them vulnerable. Remember what happened in December 2022 when those PFOF regulations were proposed? Their stock kind of tanked, didn't it? Tanked is putting it mildly. Investors got spooked because if PFOF gets banned or severely restricted, Robinhood's main source of revenue dries up. Yikes. That's not good. So market volatility, check. Regulatory landmines, check. Anything else we should be worried about? Oh, you know it. This is Robinhood we're talking about. They've got a whole risk section in their 10K reports. Well, let's dive in. What else did they flag as potential deal breakers? Let's see, where to even begin? Ah, uh, oh, yes, competition. Remember, Robinhood isn't the only player in the democratizing finance game anymore. They've got rivals coming at them from all sides. Yeah, it feels like every week there's a new investing app promising to make me a millionaire by next Tuesday. Right. It's a cutthroat market out there. Traditional brokers are stepping up their tech game. Robo-advisors are popping up like mushrooms after the rain. Even social media giants are dipping their toes into the fintech waters. So how does Robinhood stand out from the crowd? What's their secret sauce? Well, technology is a big part of their strategy. They're investing heavily in building out their own infrastructure and platforms. Like what kind of stuff? Give us the techie details. Okay, so remember how we were talking about order flow and how those trades actually get executed? Yeah, the whole market maker thing. Right. So most brokers, they use third-party clearinghouses to handle all the back-end stuff. Clearing trades, settling the transactions, managing all the paperwork. It's a complicated and expensive process. Sounds like a headache. I'm glad I don't have to deal with it. Tell me about it. 
But Robin Hood, they decided to do things differently. They built their own in-house clearing system. Wait, seriously? They handle all that themselves? Yep. They cut out the middleman, which means they save a ton of money and have more control over the entire trading process. Gutsy move. But risky too, right? What happens if their systems crash or get hacked? Oh yeah, that's definitely a concern. And they've had their fair share of tech hiccups in the past. Remember the GameStop fiasco back in 2021? How could I forget? Social media was on fire. Their systems were overwhelmed by the sheer volume of trading activity, and they had to restrict trading on certain meme stocks. Which made a lot of their users, you know, slightly irate. To put it mildly, it was a PR nightmare and a stark reminder that technology, while powerful, can also be a huge liability. Okay, so technology can be a double-edged sword. What else is new? But back to their strategy for a sec. They're leaning hard into tech. They're trying to disrupt a very established industry. And they're facing intense competition. Where does that leave them financially? That is the question, isn't it? And the answer, my friend, is dot complicated. <laughs> but don't worry. We'll unravel the mysteries of Robin Hood's financial performance right after this break. All right, so before the break, we were talking about Robin Hood's tech, their rivals, and kind of hinting at their financial picture. Mm. Let's dive into that, shall we? Because honestly, reading through their financials, I'm a little confused. <laughs> yeah, it's not your typical Wall Street bank, that's for sure. Okay, so how do we measure their success then? What numbers actually matter? Well, one key metric is their assets under custody, or AUC for short. AUC, right. That's basically how money people have parked in their Robinhood accounts, right? Exactly. And it gives us a sense of how attractive their platform is to investors. Now, during those crazy bull market years, their AUC was skyrocketing. Everyone and their dog was on Robin Hood, right? Pretty much. But then 2022 hit, the market took a nosedive, and guess what happened to Robin Hood's AUC? Let me guess. It went down. Down is an understatement. It plummeted, which shows just how sensitive their business is to market swings. If the market sneezes, Robin Hood catches a cold. Exactly. Now, another important number to look at is their monthly active users, or MAU. Right, because having a ton of accounts doesn't mean much if people aren't actually, you know, using them. Precisely. And their MAU has been a bit all over the place. They had those massive spikes in 2020 and 2021, remember? The whole stonks frenzy. Ah, the meme stock era. Simpler times. Simpler, maybe, but not exactly stable for Robin Hood. Yeah. Their MAU has kind of plateaued since then. So the challenge for them is how to keep those users engaged, especially when the market gets bumpy. Especially with all those other shiny new investing apps vying for their attention. It's a tough crowd out there. And then there's the question of profitability. Are they actually making money from these users? Right, because zero commission trading sounds great for us, but it doesn't pay the bills for Robinhood. Exactly. And that's where average revenue per user, or ARPU, comes in. It tells us how much money Robinhood is making from each user on average. And what's the verdict? Well, it's been a mixed bag. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. They're still trying to find that sweet spot, that balance between attracting new users and getting existing users to trade more, which, let's be honest, is a tough ask in this market. It's a delicate dance, that's for sure. <laughs> to say the least. And look, we've covered a lot of ground here, from meme stock mania to the intricacies of PFOF. But the big takeaway is this. Robin Hood's story is still being written. They've got this ambitious vision. They're pushing the boundaries of what's possible in finance. But they're also facing a whole host of challenges. It's like they're building the plane while they're flying it. Yeah. But hey, that's what makes them so fascinating to watch, right? Absolutely. They're a case study in disruption, innovation, and let's be honest, a little bit of controversy. Whether they can truly democratize finance, well, only time will tell. And we'll be here, 10K reports in hand, to break it all down for you. Always a wild ride. That's it for today's deep dive. Huge thanks to our expert for joining us and sharing their insights. My pleasure. Until next time. And to all our listeners, keep those questions coming. We're always listening, always learning, and always up for a good deep dive. See you next time.